At the University of Washington, veterans are treasured members of our community. We offer our deepest thanks to all who have served our nation with honor and bravery. We are dedicated to ensuring that our university is a welcoming place for those returning to civilian life and to easing what can be a challenging transition. And we're grateful to the families and loved ones of our UW servicemen and women. We see you and the sacrifices that you make, and we are honored to call you Huskies as well. While the pandemic means that we can't be on campus together to honor our veterans, the spirit of this special day lives in all of us through our words and our actions. Wherever you are this Veterans Day, I hope you will take a moment to thank those who have served and those who are serving now. I hope you'll also remember those who gave their lives during or as a result of their service. I invite you all to consider how we can support our veterans and help them find healing. We honor their strength and we welcome their many talents as we work together for a better world. To our service members, including veterans, those on active duty and student cadets, your courage, service, and dedication are an inspiration. To those who still carry losses, let us share your burden. To those who have sustained wounds, let us help you heal. Let us repay you for answering the call by supporting you as a part of our community. Each year, one of the ways in which we recognize and honor our veterans is through the Distinguished Veteran Alumni Award. The DAVA is our opportunity to honor a UW alumnus and veteran for their outstanding commitment to public service, someone who's made a positive impact on the world by going above and beyond the call of duty. It's my pleasure to congratulate this year's award recipient, retired Admiral William Center, who earned his master's in public administration from the University of Washington in 1978. Admiral Center served in the Navy for 35 years, commanding three ships and serving with distinction both at sea and ashore. As a specialist in policy analysis, strategic planning, and organizational development, he's advised the most senior levels of government. That includes serving as a senior advisor to the Joint Chief of Staff and as a Deputy Director for International Negotiations for Generals Colin Powell and John Shawley Cash Veely. He also commanded the Navy's third largest fleet concentration area, Navy Region Northwest. Admiral Center has brought his extraordinary gifts and experience to the UW, teaching classes at the Evans and Foster schools and helping to run the Humphrey Fellows Program. He's mentored many students and recent graduates. He's also served as a president of Seattle Rotary and devoted himself to nonprofit leadership as a veteran, public servant, educator, volunteer, and Husky. Admiral Center has served his country and community in countless ways. We are proud to present him with the Distinguished Alumni Veteran Award. As a teenager, I read books about the war in the Pacific. It got me excited about serving in the Navy, especially aboard ship. I was drawn to the idea that one leader can make a difference, that the captain could inspire an entire crew. I thought, boy, that's what I want to do. I want to join the Navy and I want to get to command a cruiser. Joined the Navy the day I graduated from high school. Went to uh, UCLA and ROTC, and I was happy and lucky enough to be selected to go to the Naval Academy. The first time I set foot aboard ship, I felt like I was home. And I was never, never, ever felt different. 
Okay, I don't know if I can find it. I got some out of the box. All oh, these are great pictures. This is that great old wooden minesweeper, USS Exploit 440. Our crew called her the USS Explode. <laughs> Uh, those four handsome young officers were all about the same age as I was. So we were a young and inexperienced bunch. That was a great ship. I got a call from my detailer, the guy who tells you where you're going to go, and said, Bill, great news. Uh, you can go to graduate school anywhere you want. And I said, wow, fantastic, because I really want to go to the University of Washington. And there was a kind of a silence on the other end of the line. He said, no, no, you could go anywhere. I, you know, Harvard, MIT, the Fletcher School, Stanford. And I said, yeah, that's right. I want to go to the University of Washington. What was then the Graduate School of Public Affairs in 1976. I love the faculty. A lot of mid-career professionals in the class. And I had a fantastic time here. See, the book fell apart, so things are a little disorganized. Yeah, that, it must be the next book. This is the ship I was XO on during the Navy's 200th birthday. Oh, you found her. Mm -hmm. I knew it. We took it out of there. There she is. During my career, I commanded three ships. USS Meyercord. USS Exploit, and my goal when I joined the Navy was to be the captain of a cruiser, and when I finished my tour on Midway, I got promoted to captain, and I went to command USS Reeves, CG-24, a Leahy class guided missile cruiser. We had many great adventures aboard the Reeves. We were the first ship to visit Shanghai, China, after the normalization of relations with China. It was great experience. Look at this guy. This is my wife says this is when I was lean and mean. <laughs> Admiral Miller called me into his office and told me that I had been selected for promotion to Admiral. I was really excited to get promoted. In my first assignment, I was selected by a general pal to come and work on the joint staff. I got a first hand seat to history. I spent a lot of time at the White House in the Situation Room. I got to meet President Clinton a number of times, and uh, I discovered you can work more than 24 hours in one day if you fly across enough time zones. In May of 96, I was ordered back to Seattle and took command of all our naval installations in the Pacific Northwest. It was a huge organization. There were 25,000 active duty sailors, quite a number of reserve sailors, 13,000 civilian employees. And I get to work with a bunch of great military and civilian leaders. So that's how I spent the last three years in the Navy. When I retired from the Navy, I joined the Evans School's Advisory Council and served for 22 years. When Brewster Denny retired, he asked if I'd take over his seminar in U.S. foreign policy. I taught that class off and on for the next 14 years. To me, it felt like an opportunity to pay back the things I learned at the Evans School two decades before. It was uh, the opportunity of a lifetime. The Navy and the UW made me into the man I am today. I'm grateful to join the eminent line of outstanding leaders who've been honored as distinguished alumni veterans. I'm honored to be included on that list. I'm humbled and I'm grateful. Thank you. As I think back on my career, it all seems like a great adventure. I've traveled the world, met with diplomats, presidents, and prime ministers. For a long time, when people would say, thank you for your service, I wasn't sure how to respond. But now I know what to say, which is, it was a privilege, because that's exactly how I feel. 
It was a privilege to serve my country. Detail, up, left, faith. Freeze it! Colors! Order! Killers! Right! Faith! Forward! Fight! 